All right, so today we're going to be talking about volume and surface area. So you'll be using these formulas here. This is for the rectangular prism, and then here's for the cylinder. Don't forget for pi, we use 3.14. So turn to page 37 in your packets, take your formula sheet out, and go ahead and fill in this page. All right, so make sure that your page matches mine, and then move on to the next page. All right, so on page 38, we'll start with volume of rectangular prisms. First thing is write the formula. Then I always like to label what my length would be. That's the long side, the width, and the height. Then plug that into your formula. So it's length times width times height. So 10 times 2 times 5 and that gives you 100 and with volume it'll be whatever the unit is so in this example it's centimeters to the power of 3 all right go ahead and try numbers 1 2 and 3 so pause your screen and then check yourself with me all right, guys, so make sure that numbers 1, 2, and 3 are correct. If you missed something, make sure you fix it. Um, one more thing I should probably say. So it doesn't really matter because with multiplication, you know it's commutative, so you can move the numbers around. So if you labeled your L, W, and H differently than me, you should still get the same answer. Go ahead and move on to the next page. So before we start really doing surface area, let me kind of explain to you how that works. So here we have a rectangular prism, and if you take that and you unfold it, the net of it would look something like this. So with surface area, essentially what you're doing is finding the area of each different side. So we say two length times the width. What that means is, is you have two size, you have to find the area of where you'd multiply this, in this example here, 6 times 3, length times the width. So be this one here, and then this face here. 2 length times the height, so be like the 6 times the 2, and you would do that twice because you'd have two faces that have those same dimensions. And then finally, if you look here, you have two of these 3 by 2s that you find the area of 2. So you find all those areas, then add them together, and that's how surface area works. So on page 39, let's try this first example here. So again, same thing, label your length, width, and height. And like I said, with volume, it really doesn't matter if you label yours differently, because addition and multiplication are commutative. That's 10 times 2 plus 2 times 10 times 5 plus 2 times 2 by 5. So I technically make mine into four steps. I do my multiplication. So in step 3, I've multiplied my numbers together, and then finally I add everything together. So I would get 160 centimeters, and because it's still technically area, it's power 2. Remember, area square area. Go ahead and try numbers 1, 2, 3, and then check yourself. Alright, so go ahead and check yourself with me here on page 39. If you miss something, make sure that you correct it. If you have any questions, let me know. Go ahead and move on to the next page once everything's right. All right, so here on page 40, we're looking at the volume of a cylinder. So this would be how much of something the cylinder could hold. So for instance, how much soup a soup can could hold, how much soda a soda can could hold. So your formula that you use here is pi times radius squared times the height. Do 3.14, the radius here is 4, so times 4 times 4 times 12, which is the height. And again, it's volume, so make sure that you do power 3. Before you try these three problems below, be careful with numbers 2 and 3. Those have a diameter, so make sure that you have them to use it for the formula for radius. 
Let's go ahead and try numbers 1, 2, and 3, and then check yourself with me. Alright, so go ahead and check yourself for page 40. Um, if you miss something, make sure that you fix it. Once everything's correct, go ahead and move on to the next page. Alright, so if you think of a soda can, or a soup can, so on the top and the bottom you would have two circles, kind of like is shown here in this picture. So for the net of a cylinder, you have these two circles, and then if you take the other flat side, that forms a rectangular shape. So my formula for surface area of a cylinder is 2 pi r h. 2 pi r should look familiar, kind of like circumference, plus 2 pi r squared. Pi r squared is the area of a circle, so you find these two areas of the circle, and you add everything together. So this is the net of the cylinder here. Go ahead and go on to page 41. All right, so on page 41, let's do this first example together. So we have the formulas written 2 times 3.14 times 4 times 12 plus 2, 3.14 times radius squared, so times 4 times 4. It's the same way I, I did a second ago. I'll do the multiplication first. So I got 301.44 and then 100.48 and now I will add those two together and that gave me 401.92 feet squared. So go ahead and try numbers 1, 2, and 3, but again, be careful on numbers 2 and 3 because they have a diameter. So make sure that you half those. Alright, so go ahead and check yourself. If you missed something, correct it. If not, go ahead and move on to the next page. Alright, so one of the big things that you have to know is whether to use volume or surface area with word problems. So look, Jeremy wants to know how many cans he can fit in his recycling bin. That would be volume because he's filling the recycling bin with the cans. The amount of aluminum used to make a can of string beans. That would be surface area because that would be covering the outside. Karen is wrapping her brother's gift. How much paper will she need? Again, she's covering, so that would be surface area. How many tissues can fit in the tissue box? That's volume. How much more soup can a large can hold over a small can? Volume, because the can will be full. And then finally, how much cardboard is needed to make a shoe box? And that would be surface area. Alright, so let's look on page 43. Why don't you guys try numbers 12 and 14 and then check yourself with me. All right, so go ahead and check yourself. So on number 12, Dave and Karen are building a treehouse for their daughter. The treehouse is gonna be five feet tall, eight feet wide, and 7.5 feet long. How much space will there be on the inside? That tells me to find the volume, and I got 300 feet cubed. How much space will they have to paint on the outside? So you're painting the outside to find the surface area to get 275 feet squared. 14. A Campbell's soup can is 6 inches tall and has a radius of 2.5 inches. How much paper is needed to make the label? So that's going to be the surface area on the outside. How much room is there inside the can to hold the soup? So you're finding the volume for that. So on page 44, look at number 21. Alexia swimming pool is in the shape of a rectangular prism. Her pool is 25 feet long, 14 feet wide, and 4 feet high. How many cubic feet? So when you see that cubic feet, that's a big clue that you're finding the volume. Because remember, volume is power 3, or it's cubed. So you multiply 25 times 
times 14 times 4 for the final answer there. So on page 45, try number 29 to identify each rectangular prism that has a volume less than 75 cubic centimeters. Then check yourself with me. Alright, so check and make sure that you got this one right. Then move on to the next page. So last page that we'll do together. So on page 46, try numbers 31 and 32 and then check yourself with me. Alright, so check yourself, make sure that everything's right. So 31, the volume of a cylinder is the product of the height and the area of the base. Because you do pi r squared times the height. Uh, surface area of a cylinder is the sum of the area of the two circles and the rectangular region. And then finally 32, be careful with this one because he plans to paint all sides except for the bottom part. So I just did 6 times 6 to get 36 for that. Then I followed my formula, so 2 times everything else, and I got 228 square inches.